That's the thing about life. It can be unpredictable. But your dreams need not be. How far would you go to make your dreams come true? How close are you to reaching those goals set by you? While others focus on a new normal, you focus on a new beginning. Look around for what inspires you. Build your narrative. After all, it's your story to tell. Take a chance. Take a leap. Begin your study abroad journey with us. Looking for the right course for you? Welcome to ACC Global's Course Search, your one-stop platform for all your international education needs. Browse through millions of free, valuable study abroad resources to pursue your international study dream. To begin your search, type in your preferred course in the search bar. Filter by subcourse category, level of study, destination preference, tuition fees, duration and post-study work visa. With a destination drop-down, you can search for the preferred destinations of your choice. You can also filter down courses like top-ranked universities in your preferred destination and their rankings. Browse to various career choices And you can also browse through free student resources like articles on tips to study abroad, the latest news, etc. We are here to support you with every step of your study abroad journey. To explore your course options, visit search.accglobal.com. teman-teman AECC Global, uh, thank you for taking the time to join us this very afternoon uh, di Indonesia tentunya dan uh, masih pagi di UK. Yeah. Uh, our topic for today is food sustainability in a changing world. How your Cranfield uh, Master of Science can make a difference. Saya dengan Lani Senarso, mewakili AECC Global Indonesia, akan menjadi host kalian pada sore hari ini, uh, within the next hour or so. Our guest for today is Dr. Sophia Kumpetli. I hope I spell your name right, Sophia. <laughs> At Cranfield University, who is a lecturer in the plant sciences at Cranfield University. She's also the Agri-Food uh, MSc Program Director and Network Licensing Manager for Horticultural Quality and Food Loss Network. Her interest is in urban agriculture, seed technology, and the reduction of food losses. Along with Dr. Sophia, uh, kita juga kehadiran Alan Tan, who is the International Development Manager, Southeast and East Asia, Uh, yang akan ada di background untuk menjawab pertanyaan Anda di Q&A box apabila ada. Ya. Yeah. So, uh, without further ado, uh, let me pass on the screen to Dr. Sophia to start this session. Over to you, uh, Dr. Sophia. Thank you very much, um, Lani. Oops, sorry. 
Uh, thank you very much for the introduction. Um, it's a pleasure to be here with you today and thanks a lot to everybody who has joined for this afternoon. Um, I hope you all enjoy um, uh, the, the conversation. Uh, I would like to make sure we have enough time towards the end to, to discuss, to answer any questions, any inquiries you might have. Uh, so as you can see from the subject of my talk today, um, I'll be talking about food sustainability in a changing world and how does a, an embassy from Cranfield can make a difference, what skills will give you to tackle these, these issues. Because there's, no, um, there's no question we, we, we live in a really challenging times. Um, climate, climate change is a big problem that affects everybody around the globe. Um, we know that back in autumn, the uh, UN, the, the, um, the, the, the world leaders came together in COP26 to discuss you know, what actions do nations have to take to mitigate the effects of climate change and how can we slow down uh, what is happening uh, to our planet. But it is true you know, that what scientists are saying around the world, what research says that you know, any actions agreed are not enough to, to make a big difference to what we're experiencing. So we need more change, we need more, more actions, because when we look around the world, um, we see that lots of severe um, weather uh, effects impact our food production and impact food uh, security. Um, we see, for example, in the, in the, in the past uh, few weeks, extreme heat waves in, in, in South Asia causing a big problem. And what science says and what research says that these things will become more and more frequent in the future. So they will affect more and more people and will affect food production even more. So we have lots, you know, lots of, um, we see the effects of, of climate change all around, all around the, the globe, but, and unfortunately is the, the poorest and the more in need that seem to be affected more from floods, droughts, heat waves that destroy livelihoods, destroy crops. Um, and, you know, we, we have to, to acknowledge that, you know, our food supply chains these days are global. So, um, an extreme weather event in one part of the world affect the, the food supply in, in, in another uh, part of the world. So we're all connected in that. So it's a problem that affects everybody. So definitely climate change affects food production, affects food prices, food shortages, uh, food security of the most in need. But then when we look at it on the other way around, also the food we produce is part of the problem, is part of the, the, um, the, the causes of climate change or the, the greenhouse, gas, greenhouse gas emissions produced from agriculture. And if we look at the food industry in general, um, the, they account for a quarter of the global greenhouse gas emissions. Um, so it's like a vicious circle, right? So we have climate change affecting the, the food we produce and, uh, and then the, the way we produce our food contributes to climate change as well. So it's, it's clear that we cannot really carry on with business as usual. We need to change the way we do things, the way we produce our food, perhaps the way um, change our, even our eating habits um, and, and our diets um, to contribute to more healthier um, uh, lifestyles as well. If we, if we look at the food system as a system, as a whole, we definitely see issues there um, in terms of sustainability, in terms of uh, resilience, but in terms of health as well, right? So we see more and more people um, with diet-related diseases, it was diabetes, heart-related uh, diseases, and all that boils down to, to the food we eat, to our diets, to how we eat, our lifestyle, right? So everything is, is connected. And as I say, we need a transformation. We need to change things, uh, the way we do things. And yet, you know, we know that 
the human, uh, despite all this, the human population keeps growing, right? Currently, um, we are about 7.8 billion. And if we look at the, um, uh, at the predictions by 2050, we'll have nine and a half, 10 billion people and 2,100, even more than that. Uh, so even with the more conservative, um, the more conservative predictions, we are going to reach 9.4 billion. That's a lot of people to feed. And yeah, we always say we need to need produce more food for the growing population, but actually it's not only just producing more food. Many argue that if we just waste less of the food we produce, we will, and we distribute it in a different way, we, we should have enough food for uh, everybody. So looking at food waste, we, we do waste a third of the food we produce globally. That's a 1.3 billion tons of food we waste a year, right? Um, and this, the majority of that is fresh fruit and vegetables and fish and seeds. So they're really highly nutritious um, uh, food. And it's all wasted, right? So we put so much energy and so many inputs to produce all that food um, and the production of that food contributes to greenhouse um, gas emissions as well. And then we just waste a third of it. Doesn't make sense, right? So we have a big problem here and we do need to find ways to, to, to solve it. And a few years back, the United Nations came together and, uh, and um, agreed to these 17 sustainable development goals, which I'm sure many of you are very familiar with, right? And, and the, these are targets and indicators within its goal that we should be um, working towards and try to achieve um, in, in the next few years. But the truth is when we look at these indicators and we look at these targets and we look how much we have achieved so far and what the target is by 2030, it's very unlikely that we'll be able to meet these targets, right? And, and many of these, most of these are also re related to food. So clearly there is a vision there the, um, there is a, um, a kind of need and a drive from the people to get to a more sustainable world, a more sustainable food system. But actually the way we produce our food um, is not, uh, not helping us get there soon enough, right? So we have a big challenge in our hands. Um, and most of you, you know, your age, your generation um, is, Perhaps this is the biggest challenge you would face as a generation. We need to provide the world's growing population with a sustainable, secure supply of safe, food needs to be safe, nutritious, and also affordable food. But we have to do that using less land and lower inputs, right? And we have to make sure all this is done in the context of the global climate change, because things are changing and there is um, damage in food production, all the things we've been uh, talking uh, earlier. So it's a, it's a very multifaceted uh, problem, big challenge, uh, right? And these type of problems, these major challenges, don't have single solutions or very simple solutions. So we need a multidisciplinary approach to ensure both food security and sustainability, right? Simple solutions um, are not effective enough to, to achieve that change, that impact that we really, really need, okay? So when we're, um, <laughs> my question is that, okay, <laughs> what are you gonna do about that? You know, are you ready? Are we ready, including myself to, to, to tackle this? And what sort of things we need to, to be able to, to get the skills and the knowledge and the research we need to, to drive these sort of multidisciplinary solutions. And that's what we had in mind when we, when we designed the Agri-Food MSc program here uh, at Cranfield. So I'll just give you a little brief introduction um, of, of, of the program. So under the Agri-Food MSc program, we have three courses, food systems and management, 
future food sustainability and applied bioinformatics. And when we're thinking about how we design these courses, we're thinking, okay, which is the, this big challenge that we have to, to, to solve, we, we have to tackle, right? So when designing the courses, we say, okay, this will have to be focused on the research, on world leading research. So all the courses are informed by our own research here at Cranfield, but the latest research worldwide, okay? They are driven by the industry and by what the job market needs. So they are all very uh, industry focused, um, have great links with the industry. Um, we have an industrial advisory panel that is involved in the design, the delivery of these courses. We have a regular um, uh, visiting lecturers from people from the industry. Our students run projects with the industry. So whatever we do, it has to be industry relevant. It has to prepare you for the job market, for what is needed out there. And we design them in a way that it also helps you uh, your personal development, okay? So we want to make sure we enhance your skills, your experience and your expertise. So you are ready there for the job market. You are ready to tackle these big challenges. So we give you, make sure you develop all the skills you need and you are exposed to um, the drivers and you, you build a network and the contacts you need to start making a change and, and, and uh, tackling some of those challenges that ooh, I was just, talking to you uh, earlier. Now, um, its course is slightly different in its focus, although they, they all have that ultimate goal. Um, so for example, food systems and management, you'll cover different topics. You focus a lot on food quality, on diagnostics, what's the latest um, technologies and innovations on food diagnostics, uh, focus on food safety and certification. Uh, Post-harvest technology is a big thing, try to reduce food waste. Um, so lots of the waste we produce, it happens at the post-harvest stage, once the produce is harvested and throughout the supply chain, it reaches the retailer and the consumer. So we are doing lots of work um, on packaging technologies, on storage technologies, improving shelf life. Um, uh, and then of course, uh, you know, we have um, some modules run on the School of Management here at Cranfield on food, cha food chain resilience. How can we make our food supply chains more resilient to, well, we, we talked about uh, extreme weather events, but there are lots of other shocks that can happen in a system where there is issues with the war in, in Ukraine, for example, that affect the wheat supply chains or the sunflower oil around the world. Uh, or there are um, political or social um, uh, changes um, that affect our supply chains. So how can we make our supply, our food chains more resilient? And also um, looking at uh, how can we lead corporate sustainability? So in a business environment, in a in the industry environment, what do business leaders do? How do you drive sustainability in that context? And we also um, cover, you know, we look at business innovation, okay? What sort of things do businesses should be looking at? How can we use research and innovation to, 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 to drive um, uh, business agendas uh, for more sustainable um, food production, food distribution, okay? So this course is accredited by two professional bodies, the Institute of Food Science and Technology and the Institute of Agricultural Engineers. So this is kind of a stamp of assurance that you know what you are taught, what you you is included in the in the course, what our graduates um, end up. It has uh, the full support and accreditation by two of the biggest professional bodies in the food industry in the UK. Uh, so it gives you a bit of peace of mind, and you get lots of benefits as well by from these associations. Um, now, when we look at future food sustainability, the second course that we have, you'll cover, of course, the principles of sustainability. What do we mean uh, when we're talking about sustainability? Because sometimes, you know, we 
we we use words buzzwords here sustainability resilience you know but don't really um understand what it really implies and how we measure it and how we we look at it how do we estimate things and then you will look at um the main components you think of food production what do we need soil is really important soil health is critical for food production water uh, obviously scarcity of water is a problem in many parts of the world and and so and agriculture use a lot of water. We look at technologies for seeds and crop protection, right? So how can we uh, make our crops better, more prepared for this changing world, more resilient to climate change, um, with a better shelf life, um, so they don't get spoiled that much, uh, or more nutritious, how can we enhance that? And how can we, are we able to grow them without uh, with, with less inputs in terms of fertilizers, in terms of agrochemicals and all that. So what, what's the newest technologies that, that we can use both in terms of breeding, we breed for crops with certain characteristics, new technologies for breeding, gene editing, um, uh, et cetera. And also in terms of um, uh, management uh, and uh, other innovative technologies for uh, crop production and protection. We look at biocontrol strategies um, and things like that. And of course, these days, data is <laughs> everywhere. We produce lots of data for everything. So agricultural informatics covers all the big data in agriculture from data collected from satellites to data collected from drones to sensors in the field or throughout the supply chain. So you look at different new technologies, can collect data and what we do, how we handle this data, what information can we get from that? Um, and of course, you need to know what are the latest tools in evaluating sustainability. We keep talking about sustainability, but how can we compare whether one system is more sustainable than the other in actual real terms? So there are many methods there, many tools, uh, many contradicting um, uh, each other. So it's not one method fits all. So you, you'll cover lots of different uh, options. You'll be able to critically appraise uh, different ways of evaluating sustainability. And again, in a corporate environment, leading corporate sustainability, similar to the other course, this is a shared module, um, is very important. But what is quite interesting for this course is you'll also look at strategic foresight. So if we're thinking about sustainability, food sustainability, we need to look into the future, right? So we need to be able to ensure the future generations have enough resources to produce enough food for everybody. Okay. Um, however, sometimes it's difficult to, to evaluate how, how things will play out, right? Nobody could have envisioned that there will be a pandemic and the impact that would have in the global food system. Okay. So using strategic foresight techniques, you are able to kind of build different scenarios for the future and kind of start uh preparing for different possible scenarios and th these are techniques techniques that both um businesses but also governments or other organizations will use to inform policy and inform kind of long-term decisions and strategies okay? this is really uh, really important stuff um, and when it comes to applied bioinformatics, of course, as we said now, data is everything, biological data is everything. Um, through this course, I'm not going to go through the details, but through this course, you'll be able to kind of develop your own tools for specific applications, both in agriculture and food production, but also this is much wider, right? So you, biology is biology, biological data, DNA sequences, RNA sequences, doesn't matter whether they come from a plant or from human or from animals. So this, this, has a, this course has a wider reach to more also pharmaceutical applications. Um, clinical uh, research uh, as well. Um, so overall, the structure of the courses is very similar. 
Um, so the courses are uh, divided in, in, in three parts. Um, and you will see that, so you have the, 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 the first part that is the taught, taught part is 40% of the, of the course it is from the beginning of the course till February or so. So you cover the different subjects, the different modules that I just mentioned. And that includes like lectures, seminars, workshops, lab practicals, field work, all sorts of things. So it's a, it's a, it's a quite intense part and you cover the different subjects. And then you will see that the other two parts, um, so you have then a group project that is 40 credits um, that runs from uh, February, March till uh, April, um, and the thesis and individual thesis project. So you'll see that 60% of the course, so the group project and the thesis project, so 60% of the course is research, right? So um, as I was saying earlier, um, this is not just a textbook uh, courses, right? So what you learn, the skills you develop are informed by the latest research, what's happening now, what we need in the future, right? Uh, so 60% of the course is research-based. So for the group project, what we do, we bring together students from different courses. Uh, so we bring, bring groups of uh, four, five, six students from different courses with different skills. Um, and we get them in touch with the company, uh, which the company presents them a problem they have. And we get the students to work in these multidisciplinary teams to solve that problem, present the solution to the client. So these are these kind of consultancy based uh, projects. So apart from getting the experience of working with a client, delivering something for a client as a consultancy. Um, you also develop, you know, other soft skills, team working, project management, working with people from different backgrounds. Um, so developing your professional skills, you know, how do you present something to a client? How do you work in a more professional setting? Um, so these are great uh, experience for our students. And then you get the chance, you know, during the thesis to develop your work on your own research project um, and you, you focus for four months um, on, on your own research. And these are, this part is very, uh, very flexible because you can have a thesis that is desk based or lab based, field based. You can have the work done here at Cranfield. You can do it back home or anywhere else in the world based in a company as a placement or in another research organization. So uh, there are many possibilities and many of these as well will be linked to industry uh, or funded by industry. So they're very uh, relevant to what the industry needs. One, another common thing that all the courses have across is that we have no exams, right? So we don't believe exams are the best way to assess your ability to do something or to assess your skills. So everything, your assessment will be uh, through different assignments that will try to replicate different uh, real life scenarios for you. Uh, for example, for one of the modules, the way you'll be examining, your assignment will be to prepare for a job interview for a lab manager position. Uh, so you'll be given a, an opportunity to prepare. What would you do if you were offered a position like this? What sort of solutions you would be prepared to, to deliver? Uh, another assignment would be for a local, um, for the local uh, council that they have a piece of land and they want to use it for different um, types of activities, you will evaluate what's the more sustainable way, for example, for the local authority to use th that uh, piece of land. So we try to kind of replicate things that if you go outside in the, in the job market, you will probably need to do. Um, and, and this way, we, we believe is a better way of assessing your ability and your skills. Um, now, as I said, you know, group projects are a great way to put in practice what you've learned. These are just some examples. Uh, I think the, the first ones are from this year's students. So we had a project looking at greenhouse gas balance and soil carbon stock in different uh, farms around Bedfordshire, close to Cranfield. We were, had students looking at the coconut supply chain and looking at sustainable ways to reduce uh, waste and provide 
uh, better quality nuts. Uh, some other students looking at the raspberry industry that's facing big problems with labor shortages due to Brexit uh, and, and um, difficulties in movement of uh, seasonal workers. So they looked at ways to improve through breeding uh, the raspberry so it's easier to pick. So you need less, um, fewer workers, for example, to, to pick the same amount of raspberries, but also to new innovative technologies and robotics and uh, to, to be able to have automatic harvesting. So it were really interesting projects. And from previous years, we had, for example, students um, assessing the hygiene, doing a hygiene profiling of a McDonald's restaurant and suggesting uh, solutions to, to improve that, which later on McDonald's implemented that. Uh, we had, students working with local small businesses to uh, assess how much waste they produce and suggest innovations on how to reduce their waste. So there's a really, you know, there are just some examples. Every year projects are different because we work with different clients, with different um, uh, industry partners. So there is a great variation in, in the types of projects. So for example, as I mentioned, this is from this year, what the students did. Um, so we had a, a group of students from different courses, both environment and agri-food program courses. Um, so what they did, they worked with a number of farms close to Cranfield in the local area. So they visited the farms, they collected soil samples from the farms and they analyzed um, the, the measured carbon and other uh, soil parameters, um, uh, and they also interviewed the farmers and collected data about uh, what they produce, how they produce it, the inputs, the, how much energy they use, fuel, and all that. So, and they used all that data, all that information, uh, using different greenhouse gas emission calculators that are available, and they evaluated the efficiency of these different calculators to. Um, uh, they, they compared how these different calculators um, uh, evaluate um, for the different farms um, the, the, these parameters. So they estimated for each farm the greenhouse gas emissions of the farm. And then they went even further and suggested solutions on how could each of these farm be able to reach in, in 40 years to be net zero carbon emissions, right? So for example, how many, how much of the area of the farm will have to be planted with trees and how many trees in order to, to, to get to net zero or what other changes they, they can do in their uh, farming practices in order to reach to net zero. Um, and this was part of a bigger, EU project, um, uh, it's called Agromix, Transforming Landscapes, that the students were involved with. So it was a great experience. And these are the sort of things that, you know, if you get a degree in future food sustainability, for example, you should be able to do going out there, evaluating these sort of things and suggesting solutions. Um, Another example of a group project we had this year um, was a group of students that were looking at the coconut supply chain. So the UK imports lots of coconuts from the Ivory Coast and from India. Uh, and sometimes many of these are cracked um, or they, um, they are infected uh, with fungi and the, the quality is poor. However, it's, it's very difficult to evaluate that. Uh, without actually, actually breaking the nut open and, and looking at it. So the students, what they did, they looked at the whole supply chain of the coconuts um, and, and the different points, and they identified the points in the supply chain where most waste occurs, what sort of waste was that, what were the causes of that waste. And then they also they, what they did, they evaluated a novel non-destructive method to assess the quality. So you can see, I don't know whether you can see my pointer. So there's a student here, they have this um, uh, equipment here is a um, laser Doppler, Doppler vibrometry. So this is really new cutting edge, has never been used in coconuts, uh, has been shown to be able to um, evaluate quality in, in 
uh, avocados and other crops. So the students really tried and see if that technique could be used to evaluate the quality of the coconuts in order to be able to reduce waste. And they came up with suggestions also how to improve the quality, how to reduce waste and how to valorize any waste that is inevitable, for example, using the husks of the, um, or the shells of the coconut. Um, they found ways that they could be used, um, pulverized and used as building block material. So great suggestions, great ideas. And that's what we're looking forward. You know, we get all these students coming from all over the world, um, just fresh ideas, right? New, we need new ways of doing things. Um, as I said, you know, after the group project, the student has to do an individual thesis, an individual research thesis, and these vary a lot. This is just some examples from previous years, but, you know, there's a great breadth and great range of different projects. Uh, I'm not going to go through the details. I'll just give you, like, two examples from previous, um, from last year. This was a student, Reese. Rebello um, was a future food sustainability student, and he did his thesis project was um, on uh, organic nitrogen in in tea plantations. So, uh, when it comes to tea tea estates, tea, tea plantations, the challenge is that there are still high volumes of inorganic fertilizers being used, right? Um, and these they first of all they reduce soil health so they have a negative impact on soil health and soil quality and they also of course they drive high greenhouse gas emissions and they are quite costly as well so there are an issue and uh you know it, it would be great to look at al alternatives um to these inorganic fertilizer inputs so uh, what the student did looked into the literature, uh, the latest research, what is out there, and he identified alternative practices that uh, could uh, reduce the use of inorganic fertilizers. He assessed the impacts that these alternative practices could have on soil health and also on yield, because we don't, don't want to compromise yield or the quality of the product, right? Um, and then considered also any trade-offs or any, any challenges. Uh, and actually he managed to publish, so this, his thesis, his work, it was published as a paper, uh, is already available um, uh, to read. Uh, and, but apart from that, he also got to communicate his findings to key partners like Unilever, the big uh, tea, um, uh, they, they produce lots of the tea, at least in, in, in the UK and UK trade associations. And start, you know, developing plans for follow-up research, for follow-up measurings and modeling that we can do. So this is a great example of, you know, the impact that your work, your research project during your MSc could have, right? So he managed not only to publish it, but um, his suggestion will be taken over by key uh, partners in the tea uh, supply chain. Uh, another example uh, of, a, of a thesis project uh, was Phoebe Braken's project. We were looking at regenerative agriculture in coffee plantations. So what um, uh, Phoebe did, she evaluated, she identified different uh, agricultural practices from using organic nitrogen to uh, moving to an agroforestry system or intercropping and all that. So she looked at all possible sustainable practices and looked at what impact could that have in, in coffee production. Uh, and, and Phoebe then uh, was able to communicate uh, her findings in the British Coffee Association, that's the main body of um, uh, coffee um, uh, industry in the UK. Uh, and she presented it actually in an industry presentation to 30 organizations involved in the coffee supply chain. She also uh, wrote a paper, which is currently under review for publication as well. So hopefully she will also have her 
uh, her work published uh, soon. So these are just great examples of how you can use the knowledge that you gain through the course and put it into your research project and the work that you can do, the impact that your work can have in getting a more sustainable food production uh, system um, in, the, in the years to come. Um, just a little bit to, to, to mention that, you know, here at Cranfield we have great facilities. Some are kind of unique facilities. Um, our soil facilities are uh, quite uh, the only one of their type, at least in Europe that I know of. I don't know whether anywhere else in the world there are such facilities. So we can replicate any type of soil and any type of uh, soil amendment and soil treatment. And we can grow plants at pilot scale. Um, so um, we are also able to look at soil erosion. Um, we can look at the effect of different cover crops on soil erosion, preventing soil erosion. We have this um, pink glass house that you see that glows pink now in the evenings. Um, so this is our uh, phenotyping facility. So inside that uh, glass house that is really tall, um, there is a full phenotyping uh, gantry, so we can grow plants at pilot scale, um, not just in pots, so we can grow them in this um, big one cubic uh, meter um, soil isometers, and we can use a whole range of different sensors and different imaging um, cameras for hyperspectral, infrared, uh, thermal cameras, uh, 3D um, uh, cameras to reconstruct the 3D structure of the plants. Uh, so we, we can do lo lots of sensor digital technologies. Um, also, many of these sensors can be used on drones for field studies. Uh, our labs, we have some of the best equipped labs um, for uh, analytical work and our uh, post-harvest facilities. Um, are top notch. Um, these are all new new facilities uh, to improve storage of fresh produce and shelf life. And of course, you know, for the bioinformatics students, our PC lab have uh, dedicated servers just for the bioinformatics students to use and and do their work. Um, so overall, I think you know, bringing it back, you know. We do live in challenging times. Um, we do need to produce food in a different way, in a more sustainable way, right? And, but we need innovative solutions. We cannot carry with business as usual, right? Um, and we do believe the way that we have designed these courses, but they will give you the skills to be part of the solutions, to develop, be part of developing these innovations, these new things that will change the way we, we, we do things. Um, so yeah, you, I think in situations like this, we are, we are all in part of a bit of a crisis we have. You have to either be part of the solution or otherwise you become part of the problem. And I think it's a great pleasure for me when see you know the younger generation wanting to be part of solutions, have the drive to change the world and change the way we do things. So I do hope you know, all these kind of inspires many of you to take action, take, uh, as was in the ACC presentation, take the leap, you know, do something, take your own story, um, write your own, own, your own story. And um, I, I, I do believe that, you know, uh, a degree, an MSc degree, an agri-food MSc degree will help you be part of that uh, solution. Um, so with that, you know, uh, there are a few places here you can find more information about the courses. Um, we have um, lots of blogs that our students write about their experience and how do they find it that um, will be interesting to read. You can find and follow us on Instagram, Facebook or Twitter um, and you can there you can connect with current students as well and alumni of the course. 
Uh, of course, you, know, you, you are always all very welcome to email me directly and I can send you more information or get you in touch with the right people. Uh, please feel free to do so. Uh, and I'm sure, you know, Donnie and Lani as well uh, will be able to provide you with information if you want to apply for one of these courses on how to go about it, how to how to do it. Um, so with that, I'd like to thank you all very much for your attention. And um, yeah, I think we still have quite a bit of time and I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Sophia. That was a great insight for us at AECC Global and for our audience as well, I believe, especially for those who are interested in the uh, uh, food sustainability industry related. Uh, in fact, I didn't realize that, you know, one third of the uh, food are wasted and annually. Uh, it is horrible. Yeah, well, on the other part of the world, people are still starving. You know? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you once again. Uh, we have some uh, questions in the Q&A box for you, which I'm mm -hmm. going to read for you. And uh, friends at AECC Global, silakan uh, apabila anda masih ada pertanyaan lain, ketik di Q&A box juga, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the first question is from Melina, uh, Melina Agustina. Has the data on greenhouse emission for each food product already included the emission produced during distribution or is it just from production steps? I think that's a really good point because we'll see lots of figures being published from different sources. and until you go back and see how these figures have been calculated, it's very hard to compare between different courses. I think the ones I presented earlier only include the production step, not the distribution, right? Uh, but it's a very good point because sometimes um, you see different picture, different figures presented, but because of how the methodology to, to uh, calculate this can also different. You really need to look at how these figures are calculated. In that particular one, it was just the production steps. Thank you, Melina Agustina. Hopefully, it answers your question. Uh, the second question we have two uh, questions or comments from Joseph Wu Cha Wang. Uh, I work developing in waste to fuel projects in Indonesia, and I am a Royal Academic of engineering champion for saver and of engineer life program seel promoting solid waste for alternative fuel and food waste to biogas project we have a problem with a large amount of nutrient rich digestate emitted from anaerobic digester and wish to utilize it together with carbon dioxide separated out from biogas upgrade to biomethane process. Would any of your students be interested in working on thesis to grow microalgae micro or microalgae using these ingredients for control cultivation? And the second one would be, there is also an opportunity to work on meal effluent from palm oil mills and cassava tapioca and sago mills. Thank you very much, uh, Joseph, for uh, that insight and the, the question. Uh, we are always uh, happy to collaborate with people and get students working on real problems like, like this and try different things. Uh, I'm not an expert in this particular field, um, but yeah, we would have, we, we, we have people working on microalgae as well and on uh, on academics working and researchers working in this area and i'm sure that they, they would be very interested to to connect with you and perhaps assign a student to to look at these things so uh, please feel free to send me an email i can and i can get you connected with the right uh, academics that will have more relevant expertise i'm a plant biologist so <laughs> Um, but yeah, always, always interesting in looking at 
these type of solutions. Uh, Joseph Wu, uh, you can contact us at AECC Global and we can provide you with Dr. Sophia's uh, email address so that you can contact her uh, personally and separately to get an academic who is expert in this uh, area. And as Dr. Sophia mentioned, there may be a student or two who will be interested to, do, uh, to write thesis on this problem. All right, I hope it answers your questions, Joseph. Thank you very much. Teman-teman, uh, information on scholarship that the faculty has for high-performing students sudah diinfokan oleh Alan Tang di... Bila Anda merasa atau Anda merupakan high-achieving student, tidak ada salahnya mencoba untuk mendapatkan letter of offer dari Cranfield Uni melalui AECC Global Counselor dan mencoba untuk mendapatkan scholarship yang ada dengan bantuan counselors Anda di AECC Global. Oke, okay, apabila masih ada pertanyaan lain, silakan chat uh, ketik di Q&A box. Uh, in the meantime, uh, while waiting for your questions, uh, um, just a simple question for you, Dr. Sophia, on the entry requirement, does student have to have a certain um, requirement to enter the, pro the program? I mean, do the students have to have a certain background in biology or in food, you know, food, food study or related before they can join the master program at Grandfold? We are there is a certain degree of flexibility in that. What, we're, what I'm looking for is really students that are passionate about food and they want to get in, because even if you don't have a biology background, if you have the passion and the drive, you can pick things up and we can provide you the additional support you need to uh, complete your course. We had students, for example, in the course coming from a business management background and they, Although there are some some of the modules that they are very uh, he heavy on microbiology or on on biology, they still manage to go successfully complete them because we start from a level that everybody can follow and then we build up on that. Um, and even for the future food sustainability, we had students uh, signing up with an economics background or with engineering background. So. Um, we try to make sure um, we start from the basics and, and build up and we'll provide you the right support. But the important thing is to, to have that drive yourself to, 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 to want to learn more in, in, in that area. Um, and then we can help you uh, succeed in that. Alright, thank you so much for that. Jadi teman-teman, bagi Anda yang tertarik memang untuk mengikuti program uh, course ini, silakan mencoba untuk apply melalui AECC Global. Nanti akan kirimkan untuk diakses lebih lanjut. Seperti kata Dr. Sylvia, tidak harus memiliki uh, uh, background, tentunya akan diakses berdasarkan uh, pengalaman kerja Anda juga di bidang ini. Jadi mereka akan melihat bahwa memang Anda mempunyai passion di bidang food industry ini. Oke, okay, bagi kalian well, masih... uh, Perhaps Lani, maybe uh, I should add, what we really require is the certain level of English, um, um, either TOEFL or I, but you, you probably know better the, the scores <laughs> for... Uh, uh, because that, yeah, you need to be able to read and, and speak uh, and write in English yeah. at a certain level. Uh, untuk IELTS-nya, teman-teman, tentunya ada IELTS 6,5 yang harus dipenuhi untuk uh, program ini. Uh, itu lebih penting menurut Dr. Sylvia bahwa Anda mempunyai IELTS di level yang diminta atau IIDT di level yang diminta. Oke, okay, uh, teman-teman, kita masih ada sedikit waktu. Jadi bagi kalian yang masih punya banyak pertanyaan tapi tidak ingin uh, bertanya di sini, namun ingin tahu lebih lanjut mengenai program ini lebih detail, 
Dan tentunya hal-hal yang terkait dengan program ini, silahkan uh, hubungi kanseler kami di AECC Global. Apabila memang kami di AECC Global uh, tidak dapat menjawab technical question Anda, kami akan uh, buatkan appointment langsung dengan Dr. Sofia melalui Zoom uh, di uh, schedule yang sudah disepakati bersama. Okay, uh, before we go, I would like to thank you very much, Dr. Sophia and Alan, uh, for being here with us this afternoon and sharing your insight about uh, food sustainability and what can we do at uh, MSC Cranfield. Thank you so much for today's session. Terima kasih teman-teman AECC Global untuk uh, menghadiri acara kami di sore hari ini, saya hanya ingin mengingatkan bagi kalian yang berdomisili di Bali, jangan lewatkan kesempatan untuk bertatap muka dengan wakil dari institusi di Australia pada hari Sabtu 12 Juni 2022 di Gower Park Mall, Tuban, Bali, dari jam 1 sampai jam 5. Ditunggu kehadiran Anda yang berdomisili di Bali dan sekitarnya, dan pasar dan sekitarnya, I should say. Oke? Okay? Terima kasih sekali lagi, teman-teman. Uh, selamat sore. Uh, stay safe and see you in our next session. Bye for now. Thank you very much. That's the thing about life. It can be unpredictable. But your dreams need not be. How far would you go to make your dreams come true? How close are you to reaching those goals set by you? While others focus on a new normal, you focus on a new beginning. Look around for what inspires you. Build your narrative. After all, it's your story to tell. Take a chance. Take a leap. Begin your study abroad journey with us. Looking for the right course for you? Welcome to ACC Global's Course Search, your one-stop platform for all your international education needs. Browse through millions of free, valuable study abroad resources to pursue your international study dream. To begin your search, type in your preferred course in the search bar. Filter by subcourse category, level of study, destination preference, tuition fees, duration and post-study work visa. With a destination drop-down, you can search for the preferred destinations of your choice. You can also filter down courses like top-ranked universities in your preferred destination and their rankings. Browse through various career choices And you can also browse through free student resources like articles on tips to study abroad, the latest news, etc. We are here to support you with every step of your study abroad journey. To explore your course options, visit search.acclobal.com.